black elected officials in the house, in the government, back in the 1800s? Nah. Yeah. Did you know that there were black Republicans in the House and in the Senate back in the 1800s? So we are going to learn a little bit about black history. We're going to learn about black Republicans, one in particular for this video. Uh, we're going to look at his, his life, his contributions, and the things that he offered to the black people, to America as a black man. Hello friends and welcome to The Conservative Poet. I am Amanya and I want to say thank you to all of the new subscribers. We got a whole lot of people that hit that subscribe button and I want to say thank you for doing that because I will surely work hard to entertain you, to bring you information and just to be the fighter out here in the streets for you. So Thank you for subscribing. God bless you and God keep you. In today's video, we're going to really focus on the first black senator. His name, Hiram Revels. And before I get into his history, I'm going to play a video from Wall Builders, also David Barton, who is a historian and um, he's been a great patriot. He's somebody I've actually um, seen in action and I've met him uh, in, you know, in my runs in the political space. So I'd like to, to have David explain a little bit about our great senator. What we try to do with Wall Builders Collection is present America's forgotten history and heroes. One of our forgotten heroes is the guy who wrote this letter. His name is Hiram Rhodes Revels. It's usually not a name that we think of immediately, but we should. He is one of the original black congressmen. This is Hiram Rhodes Revels right there. He's the first black U.S. Senator. Now, the story of how he became a senator is interesting, but before we get there, Hiram Rhodes Revels was a gospel minister. He was with the black denomination, AME denomination. He was also with the Methodist Episcopal denomination. He also raised two regiments of black soldiers in the Civil War, one regiment out of Missouri, one regiment out of Maryland. Uh, he ran a Christian newspaper, a very strong Christian man, but he was elected to the legislature of Mississippi in about 1868, 1870. But he became a U.S. Senator in an interesting manner. This man is named John Roy Lynch. He's one of the early black congressmen that served. He also was in the Mississippi legislature. He also was a Republican. And he said what made Hiram Rhodes Revel a U.S. Senator, our first U.S. Senator, was that he was asked to open the Mississippi legislature with prayer. He did. And he said the prayer was so good that they elected him to the U.S. Senate. I wonder what the Senate would look like today if we chose our U.S. Senators based on how they prayed. Seen that? Heard that? Good. David Barton said it well. Imagine if our senators today, our representatives today, if they had a shrimp, shred of godliness in them, imagine where we would be today. Imagine praying on the house floor and all of these great things that brings in spiritual, you know, guidance in all of this. Imagine it wouldn't be the swamp. It would not be called the swamp today. But any event, that's my rant on that. But truly do imagine if we had godly people running our government today, we would really be in a different situation. Let us get into know our great senator, the first black Republican. I want to stress the word Republican because that is critical for all of this. It's critical that we understand that this man was a God-fearing Christian who was an educator and he was a Republican. Hello, fellow patriots. Thank you so much for your support. And again, you can do so by purchasing products from the Orlando Patriots, mugs, 
t-shirts, all of your patriotic gear. We are in an election year, so we need to show the world that we support our candidates, especially President Trump. So get some gear at theorlandopatriot.com and you'll get 30% off. Thank you for your support. It means the world to me. I'll see you there. Here you have a very distinguished and upstanding citizen who took the realm and became the first black senator. And so I wanted you to just get a really good glimpse of, of this very, you know, strong and upstanding citizen. Okay, so here we're going to read a little bit or maybe a lot about the great Senator Revels. And so this is coming straight from the here government website. This is the government site or the historical archives of um, everything that you would need to find out about senators. So here is the story that they have on the great first African-American senator. So we're going to read through it and um, we're going to get started. So here we go. Welcome to the to a Senate story, our new Senate history blog. OK, in recognition of Black History Month, our first blog post celebrates the. Um, oh, God, help me. <laughs> Sequential of the swearing in of Hiram Rhodes Revels, the first African American senator. 150 years ago, on February 25th, uh, right to this February. Okay, so I'm wondering is this part of why they made Black History Month? I'm just saying. Uh, on February 28th, uh, on February 25th, 1870, visitors in the PAC Senate galleries burst into applause as Senator-elect Hiram Revels, a Republican from Mississippi, entered the chamber to take his oath of office. Those present knew that they were witnessing an event of great historical significance. Revels was about to become the first African American to serve in the United States Congress just 22 days earlier on February 3rd, the 15th Amendment of the Constitution was ratified. Okay, quick stop here. The 15th Amendment was ratified. Um, just a quick note that a whole lot of racist Democrats did not want this to go through. A lot of them did not support this bill that would give blacks an opportunity to vote. They didn't support it. But what are you gonna, what are you going to expect from Democrats? So, any event, um, the 15th Amendment of the Constitution was ratified, prohibiting, prohibiting states from disenfranchising votes on account of race, color, or previous condition of serf servitude. Revel was indeed, he was indeed the 15th Amendment in the flesh and blood. So he was definitely the example of what you can do when you stop racist from standing in the way. So he became the first senator, right? After, they, after the 15th Amendment was signed into law, he became the first, the living flesh of what happened, right? It's historic. And again, this was a lead from Republicans, not Democrats. Just want to make that clear. Okay, as his contemporary, the civil rights activist Wendell Phillips dubbed him. Okay, Wendell Phillips, we'll have to learn about him a little bit more. Hiram Revels was born a free man in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Wow. On September 27, 1827, the son of a Baptist preacher, as a youth, he took lessons at a private run, 
a private school run by African-American women and eventually traveled north to further his education. He went to the north, which was really where, um, you know, people were freer in the north. During this turbulent decade of the 1850s, Revel preached to free and enslaved men and women in various states while su sur oh god help me surreptitiously assisting fugitive slaves when the civil war began in 1861 revels was serving as a pastor in baltimore before long he was forming regiments of african-american soldiers in maryland serving as union army chaplain oh wow he served as the chaplain in mississippi and established schools for freed slaves in missouri gosh he was moving around he settled in natchez mississippi at war's end where he served as presiding elder of the african methodist episcopal church in 1868 he gained his first elected position as alderman of the town of Natchez. Oh my goodness. So that would be like he was um, like a commissioner of that town. So he started, he, he was not just the, the senator. He, he actually did civil civic duties prior to going into the Senate. So the next year he won election to the state Senate as one of the 35 Africans elected to the Mississippi State Legislature that year. Wow. So you see this right here. I have it blown up where you'll be able to take a quick look and see it for yourself. I'm going to move on from it from here, but you'll be able to, maybe let's see, let's see if it'll work. Hopefully you can still see it. I can't really see it, you know, to read it out, but, um, but you can see it there. Okay. Oh gosh. How do I get back? Okay. Okay. And, um, executive department didn't catch what it said. State of Mississippi. Okay. Reverend's reach. Okay. Harem certificate of election. Oh, okay. This is the official docs, the receipts <laughs> that he was, that he was, um, you know, put in. Okay. So in 1870, as Mississippi sought readmission to representation in the Congress, the Republican party firmly controlled both house of Congress and also dominated the Southern state legislate, le, legislature that along with the pending ratification of the 15th amendment set the stage for the election of congress's first black african member i'm going to stop right here so so okay so what i'm seeing is that they had a great foundation to do this, the Republican party to do this because they had the house also. And so kind of wondering if it was Democrats, do you really think that this black man would have gotten in as Senator back then? Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't think so, my dear. I don't think so. Okay, one of the first orders of business for the new Mississippi state legislator was conveyed on January 11th, 1870, was to fill vacancies in the United States Senate, which had remained empty since the 1861 withdrawal of Albert Brown and future Confederate President Jefferson Davis. Oh, wow. So they had a whole lot of vacant seats. And so they poured people in. They put put the Negroes in. Y'all know. Representing around, well, that's what they were referred to, Negroes and colored men. So, you know, that's what they were referred to. Negro is nothing but black. Just saying. Just saying. 
Uh, representing around one quarter of the state legislative body, the black legislators instead insisted that one of the vacancies be filled by a black member of the Republican Party. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. An opportunity of electing a Republican to the United States Senate. Man, did you just hear? They insisted on having a black voice. Um, into, they had all these empty seats and they insisted to make sure that at least one of these seats had to be a black voice. This was the Republican Party, not the Democrats. So again, the party who has always championed black peoples, who has always championed progression, who has always championed moving forward, looks to me like that was the blacks. I mean, that was the Republicans, especially when we know that these are people who are making laws. This is where it really, really matters, you know, in the bot, in such big bodies, this is where it matters, um, to have representation. And it was Republicans who was opening up those doors to make sure that black voices were in that space. Okay. I don't want this video to be super, super long. I may not read this whole thing, but I will put a link to it in the description of the video. That way you can go in there and really digest it all. But I'll read a little bit more and um, as we go on. Okay. Um, an opportunity of electing a black Republican to the United States Senate to fill an un expired term, Breville later recalled, and the colored members, after consulting together on the subject, agreed to give their influence and votes for one of their own race for that position. And it would, in their judgment, be a weakening, weakening blow against color line prejudice. Since Revel had impressed his colleagues with an impassionate prayer at the opening of the session, legislatures agreed that the shorter of the two terms set to expire in March 1871 would go to him. And so he, uh, I'll have a, a larger picture of this, or maybe we can just open it up. I won't read it, but here is his oath of office. This is how this was his swearing in. again, the receipts. Um, Mississippi gained readmission on February 23rd, 1870. And Senator Henry Wilson, one of the Senate's strongest civil rights advocates, promptly presented Revel's credentials to the Senate. Immediately, three senators issued a, a challenge. They charged that Revel had not been a U.S. citizen for the constitutionally required nine years. Oh, citing the 1857 Dred Scott Supreme decision, they argued that Revels did not gain citizenship until at least 1866. With passage of that year's Civil Rights Act, and perhaps not until the Fourth Fourteenth Amendment was ratified in eighteen uh, in eighteen sixty eight, by this logic, Revels could re claim that he had been he he had been a U.S. citizen for at most four years. This was a tough read, but what I'm guessing here is that. Um, the Democrats didn't want him in because they're saying, well, he, he'd been a slave and there hasn't been enough time for him to be a citizen, even though he was, he was born here. That's, that's what I'm getting. Revels and his supporters dismissed the challenge. The 14th Amendment had repealed the Dred Scott decision, they insisted, and they pointed out that long before 1866, Revel had voted in the state of Ohio certainly not qualified him as a certainly that qualified him as a citizen the time had passed for argument nothing more need to be said for a long time it had been clear 
that colored persons must be senators. Massachusetts Senator Charles Sumner, I was going to say Schumer, (laughs) declared bringing the debate to an end and stringing speech. Oh my God. And stirring speech. All men are created. Oh God, the, the speech. All men are created equal, says the great declaration. And now a great act attests to his, to this uh, variety. Today, we make the declaration a reality by an overwhelming margin. The Senate voted 48 to 8 to seat revel. Wow. Escorted to the, to the well by Senator William, Wilson, revels took the oath of office on February 25th, 1870. 48 to 8. I'm wondering, all Republicans, do you think the eight were Democrats? Yeah, probably. So I'm going to end it here. It's not a lot to go, but I'm going to end it here because this video is probably long enough. So I'm going to stop reading here. But again, it will be linked in the description box. And you probably will be able to read it better without me making so many, um, without me tripping so much. So, well, there you have it, friends. A little bit of Black history, a little bit of Black Republican history. So thank you guys for taking the time and listening to me rant here, especially with the reading part of it. Like I say to you all, I, I went to the public school, so please forgive me. So thank you again for watching, sharing, and subscribing. And as promised, you will be able to see some of those uh, um, historic pieces next after I'm done here. So God bless you. God keep you. Um, Talk to me in the comments. How did you like it? Um, Did you learn anything? Um, Would you like for me to make a few more of these? Because I actually have several um, more of these great uh, Black Republicans who served. So tell me, hey, Amanya, we'd love to um, hear a little bit more about this, especially during this February in Black History Month. School us a little bit more about Black Republicans. So if you're interested in seeing that, hit me off in the comments and say, yes, ma'am, and I'll know what you want. Okay, so I'll see you in another video. God bless you. God keep you. And again, thank you all for all of your support here on The Conservative Poet. I am fueled and ready to continue to present to you really, really great content, but I do need your help to continue to do do so. And I do appreciate your help. Your sharing, your commenting, you're watching the videos, and so on. So thank you again, and I will see you in another video.